It's good to see everyone here tonight. Let's go with the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings upon our service. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this wonderful day that you've given us, Father. We thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity given to us that we can come out to your house tonight, dear Lord. And I pray that while we're here, uh, everything that's said and done, dear Lord, would uplift and glorify your name. We ask, dear Lord, your blessings upon this service. Pray that you be with those that's unable to be with us tonight due to, uh, to whatever reasons, whether it be sickness or death, dear Lord, I pray that you comfort and heal as only you can do. Again, Lord, we thank you for all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> now let's remain standing and we'll sing a shelter in a time of storm. sing where we'll never grow old.
will sing the sweet by and by. stand at this time fellowship with one another as our ushers come down at this time.
As far as announcements for the uh, upcoming week there, uh, or a few of those will be coming up here shortly. Let me rephrase that. Uh, barbecue dinner there at uh, Limestone Ruitan on the 21st there, 4.30 to 8. Uh, baby shower coming up, uh, be a couple of weeks out there, April the 30th, for Garrett and Kelsey DeBowtie Clark. Garrett and Kelsey Clark. Uh, and that will be, let me see here, I just read it. After the service there on Sunday morning service, yes. Uh, and it also there, uh, gives you details of where they're registered at. Uh, ladies Bible study this week, Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, men's Bible study Wednesday at 5.30. Then there's the community Bible study there at Raytown Store, uh, continuing on this month. Uh, and it'll be on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Women Active for Christ this Wednesday, 6.30. Okay, 6.30. I made myself a note, but I couldn't remember the time. Uh, teens also meeting as a group on Wednesday night from 7 to 8 there. And then the last, last Wednesday of the month, the YWAC and the Young Masters Men, uh, ages 12 through 18, will meet during that time. Uh, let's see, the food pantry will be this week on Thursday, April the 20th at 12.30. Uh, then we also still have the, uh, the slips uh, remember the yellowish orange looking slips that we had on our bulletin there last week uh, for information there to fill out uh, for folks that you uh, uh, would like to be visited or contacted about coming to church uh, and, and uh, fill those out. There's some uh, blank ones out there in the foyer and then you can put those in the basket there. Let's see, I think that's all there. And of course, speaking of babies, the, the picture of the Cole's new son, Elijah, was on our bulletin there this morning. Uh, good looking young man there, uh, eight pound, 10 ounces. So we're excited about that. I'm sure things are uh, changing there at the Cole house for sure. <laughs> so with the little ones and then one trying to keep, keep quiet for the littlest. And so uh, at this time, we'll go into uh, prayer request. And that's the reason I've got my phone out. There was a couple there that come in and I want to make sure I got them. Uh, as uh, Brother uh, Zenas had met mentioned there this morning in his sister's passing, uh, that uh, funeral service will be at Dowdy Stevens there uh, Tuesday from 5 to 7. Uh, and then that's also uh, Charlie Carmack will be helping or doing that part of the service there. And that was his sister-in-law, kind of give you an idea of the connection there to the family. Brother Charlie's come here before and, and uh, preached for us here at the church. Uh, then also one that come in there, uh, Michael Martin, uh, hurt, his, hurt his back uh, in an accident. Uh, he's up at the ER there in Johnson City. Uh, then inside the bulletin, there's several uh, listed there. Uh, do y'all have any you'd like to share tonight before we go to Lord in prayer? Remember a gray bill in the hospital there? Possible blood clot in the lung? Remember Brother CL? Doesn't look right from when I look down here. I'm almost, that's the reason I'm kind of scatterbrained. You know, you get that one thing that you're always used to and they're not there, <laughs> feel lopsided. <laughs> so we, should, we do miss them, we need to pray for them. Also let's remember uh, Dwight uh, Mitchell, uh, uh, as some procedures and things that he that he's uh, going through right now, so let's remember him in prayer. Others tonight, Miss Patty. Yes, thank you. Others, you'd like to share? New pastor that's coming. New pastor that's coming. And like I, I, I made mention of this morning, uh, with the limitations that are uh, resources that are out there for uh, pastors or preachers that's called to be pastors that don't already have a church is very slim. So anytime that there's a, a pastor change or a pastor need, there's a more than just one church is affected by that move. So uh, let's let's. Keep that in mind as well. Not only for the one coming here, but uh, there, there's a good possibility there could be a void or a, a need for a pastor at another church. So let's let's pray for that as well. Okay, 
Remember Miss Teresa? Fox, right? I remember that. Wow. Okay. Okay, so remember Brother Jerry and Sister Edna? Some upcoming decisions there that they need to make. Chucky Doak, Chucky Doak, Chucky Doak High School. Starting a Christian base, uh, I would assume that would be a club type thing there, so let's be much in prayer for that. Because you know that the devil is going to be fighting that back tooth and nail, uh, not only kids but parents as well, so let's pray for that. Okay, any other strike? Okay, so remember Sister Ann? Okay. All those that have an unspoken lift of hand? All right. Brother Miriam, would you lead us in prayer from right there, please, tonight? Remember these as many as you can. This time I'll turn it over to Pastor Roy. Isn't it good to be here? Uh, God has blessed us. God has given us a whole lot to be thankful for. And uh, turn, if you will, to Psalms 127. Uh, I want to thank for just a moment tonight uh, those that labor in vain. We, uh, we think sometimes we're uh, supposed to be doing something, but I tell you, if God's not in it, it's not supposed to be done. Uh, our world today is teaching us that everything's okay when we all know everything isn't okay. The world teaches us things that's contrary to the Word of God. And if it's contrary to the Word of God, it's not supposed to be. The world is telling us all of these things going on that they're going to be okay. Uh, listen, if it's not what the Bible teaches, it's not going to be okay. This is our guidebook. This is our director. This is what's going to get us there. And thank God today for that. I'm just going to read one verse, and that's verse 1 of Psalms 127. It said, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Father, we come now, Lord, asking you for leadership, Lord, as we preach this message. We pray, Lord, that your will be done. We pray, Lord, that you'll put your hands upon us. Pray, Lord, that you'll put words in our mouth, memory in our mind. Pray, Lord, that you'll open up each of our hearts, dear Lord, that we might be obedient to you. We ask this now in Jesus' name, and amen. Do let me say I'm excited about what the board has brought back. I, I was out cutting my grass a, week, a couple of weeks ago, and um, it's hard for me to do two things at a time, but I could really uh, turn the steering wheel and pray at the same time. And I was a praying for a pastor here at the church, and uh, I got about halfway across the back, and just like standing right there in front of me was Tim Brose. 
And I thought, boy, oh boy, Lord, how, 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 how real that is. And uh, it's amazing. If we pray, God will show us. If we pray, God will open the doors to us. And uh, I appreciate the board for their leadership and their guidance. I appreciate all of you for what you've done for Paul and me. I know we're getting close to being done, and uh, I kind of dread that part, but I have really, really, really enjoyed doing what I've been doing here. I thank you for giving us that opportunity, and uh, Paula has really kept me on my toes. She'll go get the bulletin, and she said, these people need a visit. Uh, they haven't been here for a few weeks. We better go see them. And I'll say, well, okay, let me, let me get, get myself going here. And she's buddy, she gets us going. And uh, nothing like a good pastor's wife, amen? And I thank God for the one that God has given me. I, I wasn't even a preacher. I was out of church whenever she married me. Uh, she wanted to go to church every, every Sunday at an army base, and I told her we didn't need that in our home. I had been my own man. I had stripes on my arm, and I didn't need her to tell me we was going to church. And uh, things got pretty rough, but thank God she's still with me, and I uh, got my heart right back in church, and then God called me into the ministry. What is so amazing uh, I remember one day whenever I had been selling insurance and I went in one afternoon and told her, I said, uh, babe, I think I'm going to quit my church, quit my job and uh, find, find us a church somewhere. Uh, she said, well, when are you going to do that? I said, I'd already done it this afternoon. <laughs> and uh, she said, you think I need to start packing? I said, well, I don't know where we're going, but uh, it might be good to start. And uh, so uh, I got word out, and believe it or not, a church in Nashville, Tennessee, about three miles from the Bible college called me and uh, said, we'd like uh, for you to come down and preach. And I went down, and uh, they didn't even vote on me at that time. They come to me and said, listen, Roy, uh, we will call the deacons at, uh, up where, where uh uh, where you're pastoring, uh, where you pastoring, and we'll let them know you're not coming back, and we'll send me up to get your U-Haul and haul you down here. Why don't you just stay while you're down here? And uh, we couldn't do that because we had things we had to cover up. But uh, I, I thank God it wasn't something we had to wait. We knew when we got there. Now, believe it or not, Brother Tim's going to know when he comes through that door. This is the place. And uh, we need to be praying for him. But uh, that was in 1980, and uh, I could really tell you a lot of stories, but I'm not going to. Let's look at this, uh, those, who, who, those who labor in vain. As I thought about them, I, I thought about all the works of men built independent of God are vain. There, this, this psalm teaches Man's dependence on God for success is building lasting things. If we do not build it on God, we won't see anything come out of it. Turn, if you will, to Genesis chapter 4. I want to think about how that Cain built his altar all in vain. As I look in chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, I'm just going to read over a few of these verses to get the idea said, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore a son and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. In verse 2, and she again bare his uh, son Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a, was a tiller of the ground. And it proceeded a, a, of time, the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought forth brought of his fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of the flock and all the fat thereof. And the Lord has respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. 
and Cain was very wroth, and his, his countenance fell. And in verse number 8, it said, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Why? Because God had blessed the, the sacrifice of, of, I get these all messed up, the sacrifice uh, of Abel, and he didn't bless the sacrifice or the altar of Cain, and Cain killed Abel. And as we look at this, we can see how that these processes came about. When we substitute our plan for God's plan, we fail. And uh, I, I thought about some scripture over in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 9 and verse number 12, that uh, if we change anything in church, pertaining to anything that is contrary to the Bible, uh, we're, not going to, we're not going to last. It will fail, and it won't be what God wants it to be. And as we look here in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 12, as I thought about this, Cain built his altar all in vain because he built it and offered up the sacrifice of vegetables Abel offered up a sacrifice of blood and God was pleased with that sacrifice. Today, God has offered his son as our sacrifice and the only way we're going to get to heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of animals won't get us there and that's what he's a saying in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 12. He said, neither by the blood of goats and, and calves, uh, he said, but by his own blood he entered in one once into the holy place, having obtained eternal uh, redemption for us. Uh, and if the blood of bulls and of goats uh, and the ashes of heifer sprinkling the, the unclean sacrifices to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, uh, who through the eternal spirit uh, offered himself into ever without spot to God, uh, purged your conscience from dead works, uh, he said to lure the serve the living God. Uh, uh, we need to realize uh, it's through the blood of Jesus. Uh, the blood of animals won't get us there. Uh, uh, the ashes won't get us there. Uh, uh, but we are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, others say you can do this, you can do that. Uh, uh, but if it's not through the blood of Jesus, uh, it's not no other sacrifice going to get us there. Uh, as I thought about this, uh, I thought about how many times uh, uh, we see different groups are doing different things. Uh, uh, brother, I don't care what the name over the church door is uh, as long as we believe in the Bible uh, and as long as we preach the Bible uh, and as long as we believe that we've got to be born again uh, and we've got to be saved uh, uh, we're going to go to heaven. Uh, uh, there isn't going to be a bunch of little churches over there. Uh, uh, there's not going to be a whole bunch of, inter uh, of, of Baptists. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of others. Uh, uh, we're all going to be one big family of God and we're all going to be part of the family of God and brother I can't wait to get there I talked to the family back there they were brought their Nazarenes nothing wrong with that and we're a free will Baptist nothing wrong with that but we're not all we're, we're, we're going to all go to heaven but believe me there's going to be some free will Baptists don't go because they're trying to get in the wrong way amen we need to go God's way or we're wasting our time. I thank God as I looked at this and I thank God as I prepared for this. Uh, I thank God as I looked and uh, uh, studied my Bible uh, uh, the other day down through the week. Uh, 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 when, we, uh, uh, when, when we substitute our plan uh, for God's plan, uh, we're going to fail. When we start bringing things into our church uh, that not supposed to be here, uh, it's going to fail. And as we look around about uh, what's going on outside, today. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things uh, that I don't want to see brought into this church. Uh, and you're the same way. I've got confidence in you. Uh, I know there's things out there that people would love to get in here. Uh, uh, but brother, as long as I've got anything around here, as long as I'm just sitting over there, I'll be one that will be contrary to anything uh, that comes in here that is contrary to the Word of God. Amen? He says, you got to be born again. You got to be born again. 
He said we got to be cleaned up of our sin. That means we got to be cleaned up from our sin. That means I don't care if you're homosexual or a drunk, you're still a sinner. That means if you're a good moral man, never been saved and don't know Jesus, you're just as much a sinner as a drunk and a homosexual. We'd all need to come to Jesus through being born again. And if we don't come through Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed, we're wasting our time and we're laboring in vain. Second thing I thought about was also found in the book of Genesis. And uh, this is found in chapter, uh, uh, chapter uh, 11, I think, where it was at, uh, where they were talking about how that uh, they, uh, 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 the, the men of, of Bellum, Bellum uh, uh, labored in vain whenever they tried to build a, a tower into heaven. You know, I've always, I've, I've been one that always thought, where do all these nationalities come from? Where do all these different people come from that all of them talks different languages? I don't know. My, my thought is, 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 could, is it would be no different than uh, uh, Spurgeon or uh, uh, J. Vernon McGee or Oliver B. Green or uh, the, the, the Worsby's Notes or Matthew Henry. I, I, I think they all come about right here in chapter 11. I think that all these different languages, look what he says here in this, in verse 1, and I'm just going to quickly go down to verse number 11. And I want us to think along the lines that uh, the men of Babel, he said, labored in vain, uh, uh, beholding, uh, for God must be under I said, building for God must be under God's direction. This was not under God's direction. This was brought about because man wanted to do something uh, uh, to show what they could do. And it said, and the, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Uh, in verse 3, and they said one to another, uh, and let us make a... Uh, let us make brick uh, and burn them thoroughly. He said, and they that uh, uh, they had brick for stone uh, and, and slime for the mortar. It said in verse 4, and it said, and they said, uh, uh, go to, let us go build us a city and a tower whose top uh, uh, may reach into heaven and let us make us a, na uh, 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 a name uh, lest we be scattered abroad in verse Eight, six. Uh, it said, and the Lord said, "Behold, uh, the people is one, uh, and they have all the one language, uh, and they begin to." Uh, it said, and at this they they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them. He said, which they have imagined to do. In verse seven, it, go to, let us go uh, down, and there confront. Uh, their language that they may not understand one language against it. Uh, in, in verse uh, verse eight, so the, the the Lord scattered them abroad from thence unto the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the t city. Therefore, the name of the place was Babel, because the Lord did these did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence.